everyone, and thank you for tuning in to Davis Media. Welcome to another episode of In the Studio. I'm Lynn Weaver, and my guests are Larry Fisher, Cool Davis eco hero, and Jim Hill, Senior Recycling Specialist. Uh, we are here uh, to talk about the reuse revolution. Well, it is no secret that the United States is a land of consumerism and for many, the infamous land of waste. A few years ago, I met a student from Nigeria here in Davis. Um, he had just come into the country and the conversation of first experiences or first impressions came up. So I asked him if he had had a first impression of the United States and his answer totally astounded me. He looked at me, he paused and then seriously said, the size of your waist and the size of your trash cans. Wow. So what are we going to do to minimize the amount of trash we generate? Um, Jim, you've been a recycling specialist professionally for many years and you've also been dealing with recycling. Uh, what did you recycle and where? <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm happy to say I'm actually retired now, but um, <clears throat> yes, for many years I started with the California's Bottle Bill program. And in California, as in some states, you pay a deposit uh, to get your bottles yes. back. And from there, I branched out into many different uh, aspects of recycling and reuse. Um, and so I, I've done a lot of research. I've been involved in the Sustainable Materials Research Unit in CalRecycle and a lot of policy work on uh, some of the, the 30,000 foot level sorts of things that we can do as a society to, uh, to make our system more sustainable from a materials and energy standpoint. So you are one of the best people to be here. Well, I this. hope so. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so, um, yeah, reuse in particular is something that uh, often gets sort of short shrift. And you hear the mantra, uh, reduce recycle, or <laughs> excuse me, reduce reuse recycle. Yeah. See, yes. there I forgot. Yes. People focus mostly on recycling, which is, which is a good thing. We do need to recycle more materials. But reuse actually can save more energy, more materials, uh, than recycling. It's harder to measure, which is probably one reason we don't give it as, as much uh, attention. Attention, yes. Well, I, I understand that recycling is very expensive in terms of uh, energy and uh, manpower or person power, and so reusing is more cost effective, wouldn't you agree to that? <clears throat> That's generally the case. Yes. And, and of course, when, when we use terms like more expensive, that you always have to say, well, compared to what? Yes. And yeah. so from a broader standpoint, recycling uses much less energy, typically, than making, making things out of virgin materials. That's true. Reuse uh, can often uh, use even less energy than recycling. Mm -hmm. uh, case in point, for many years in California, we had uh, a voluntary um, bottle system for refillable bottles. Yes. And as a kid, I would go up and down the beach. We yes. used to call it bottle hunting. Yes. <laughs> and uh, we'd go hunt for bottles and take them to the grocery store and return them. That was all a reuse system. Yes. They would take the, the glass bottles back and wash them, use them again, and use them locally, typically. Yes. Now, that whole system has changed dramatically since I was a kid. Yeah, and it's a pity because it was also an incentive to earn a little money. <clears throat> it is. Which, and it's yes. still an incentive in California, but the system has shifted more towards recycling. I see. Which, which is still I'm a glad good you make the distinction between the two because a lot of people, including me, have a little trouble understanding that. Right. So that's very nice. Let me just move to Larry. Okay. And uh, Larry, you are, as I said, the cool Davis hero, eco hero, and master recycler. And you are very well known in Davis uh, for your efforts and your contributions. So 
thank you for what you do for the community. Sure. Now, you've had a very adventurous life, and you lived in a very poor country, one of them being, I believe, Yucatan. Yes. And uh, that, uh, I believe, gave you a different perspective on what people are using and wasting. So when you came back, you uh, came up with very artistic and creative ideas on how to um, create something different, transform something that was to be thrown away into something more uh, that you produce. Um, why are you doing this? Ooh, I ask myself that every day. <laughs> well, um, I do it with a big picture is the climate change and that we are the 5% of the world's population using 25% of the world's resources. And so I'm trying to look for a way that in our culture and our way of, of high usage of material goods to not be the low usage of the third world and uh, in developing countries that I witnessed when I was uh, living overseas, but to have us do our part following the, the uh, Paris Climate Conference that basically said we all have to work locally to reduce our carbon footprint. So that's yes. where I begin. What I'm particularly interested in uh, what you do is that you use your artistic talent to uh, recreate something that was trash and that becomes a very artistic, very reusable object. And um, to illustrate that, perhaps we can show, I think you brought uh, two or three images yeah. of what you've created. So let's see if okay. we can, here we go. So what is this? Well. <laughs> <laughs> I personally don't consider this one of my, my most artistic um, pieces. Doesn't matter. Pieces that I made. Looks very <laughs> handsome to me. Well, spacious. I, <laughs> <laughs> so my um, concept is Torima, and it's the first uh, two letters of totally recycled materials. So I start with something, and I see it, it that it's occurring in the natural environment, in the recycle environment yes. at materials recovery, and so this is a bunk bed frame you put horizontally and was it, or is it, it was it was. is no longer okay. it is now a workbench i and, see and yes so so it's a, a pity we don't have a before and after i, mean, I should have that but um, i was i was told i only had a few slides so <laughs> <laughs> good answer yeah <laughs> so um steel corner pieces were put in the corner of this bunk bed frame um recycle four by four posts are put in for the legs and the Door is a from Hibbert Lumber locally here. They give me all these free free solid coil doors. So this can be taken down, taken in your car somewhere. You can put up your workshop and then uh, put on um, workshops for people or tools. just or tools or yes. arts or something like yes. that. Um, this well, is the second one. Yes, that's very. Is it a coffee table? Yes. Yes. And this is without the glass. Without the glass. <laughs> <laughs> this um, I made some years ago, and this is leaf springs. These are the curved uh, springs that are underneath the cars, and I just kind of cleverly oh, welded them together because I like the beautiful form that they created when they're welded together in this form. And the top part is bed frames, and then we'll put glass on the top. So it's local materials saved from going over to China to end up in some smelter to be used locally, and the hope with these products that I'm showing you is that someday we can have um, an assembly line cottage industry where we don't ship this stuff outside of uh, our country and then have it come back looking very much like a coffee table from overseas. Well, the, this is, uh, oh, this is beautiful. What is it? Oh, um, this is the, um, the intermediate stage. Um, I worked with uh, <clears throat> five engineering seniors last year and we I proposed an all um, recycled materials chicken coop and all the door opening and closing and the misting system to keep them cool that added on to this once it was finished was, um, was all recycled materials and mostly recycled materials. But I insisted that the students take a look and see how to make an all automated chicken coop 
and to, 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 to change their way of thinking that we have local sources here and that as engin future engineers, they need to go into those new sources. So that's, this was the... Um, well, you know, it's very impressive. It's uh, very pleasing uh, to look at and very useful. Uh, so, and I, I dare to say that you probably enjoyed it a lot to create these new things, yes. Very, very creative endeavor, and I'm so impressed with people that uh, can do CAD drawings on top of laptops and show me what they've envisioned yes. and flip it around. Yes. The students that I worked with were just amazing. I'm so impressed mm -hmm. with the... And you are a teacher, and uh, uh, you teach students here locally, yes? Yeah, yes. Um, on campus. Um, Yes. I've done three seminars on campus where we took uh, broken tool heads, garden tool heads, and we refitted them with TV antennas and conduit and whatnot. Not that I think that people with UC Davis degrees are going to make tools, but <laughs> I wanted them to see how, a new way of looking at the world well, of I recycle. Well, I think it's, a, it's very, very interesting what you're saying, and I hope that someday, as you mentioned, we'll have a cottage industry. Yes. Yeah. Uh, here yeah. in Davis, and made hope. of, and I think you would be the best person to to spearhead that. Right. So yeah, it is very impressive. It makes me, uh, you know, my granddaughter who is only eight, she watches uh, my froggy stuff in <laughs> at YouTube, and it's the same concept. They take little pieces of things and then they make something else with it. Sorry, I digress. No, but I'm glad to get to the younger people because they yes. have to carry the weight of, of the of, carbon of, footprint yes. and what's happening in the world. So, That's and right. I, and if I could jump yes, in just a minute, please. what, what Larry's doing is, is a great example of a new way of thinking that is taking the world by storm in many ways. And yes. So reuse is a big part of that, more recycling. And in the past, we had what some analysts call a take-make-waste economy, a linear... Take, make, waste. Take, That's make, wonderful. waste. It's a linear yes. economy where we extract things out of the ground, we make something, we use it up, and we throw it in the ground again. Now, there's much talk, the latest buzzword is called a circular economy. Yes. And in fact, in Europe and parts of Asia, these, are, these notions are being enshrined in law. Mm -hmm. And uh, so it's a little slow in coming to the United States, but Larry's on the forefront, I think, of how you can do that locally, and it has global implications. Well, this is very interesting. Um, we, uh, there was, uh, let me quickly go to another point, which I think is key, because 15 minutes go fast. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and I wanted to start with uh, uh, Jim very quickly. Now, um, uh, there is a dilemma with this uh, recycling, reusing, and conserving energy, is consumerism, many people say is leads to prosperity. In right. other words, uh, uh, companies produce, people buy, and companies make money and give it to people who buy more. Right. So how do you, uh, how do you balance uh, the, uh, the consumerism versus uh, the uh, conserving energy and the materials? Yes. Do you know the, if the industry has an answer, or you have an sure, answer to Sure, there's that? Lots, of, lots of people working on this issue, and, and it is an excellent question. We're so mm -hmm. uh, used to think, thinking that growth is the answer. And in fact, there's much research that suggests that if we can make things in a different way, we yes. can still have prosperity. One statistic from, actually it's a very old study, is uh, uh, one analyst or, or group looked at um, tonnage of material, and they looked at 15,000 tons of material going to the landfill, translated into about one job at the landfill. The same materials going into a reuse and recycling economy yes. produced nine jobs. Oh, fabulous. And uh, so that's just one, one example, but there's much, much more uh, interest in this sort of circular notion nowadays with the drivers of climate change, pollution in the ocean, mm -hmm. Um, toxicity in the materials we use, all these things are pushing to use yeah. materials and energy better. Yeah, it's fascinating. I'm, I'm afraid I must stop you there. Sure. I just want to mention, because we're out of time, uh, I just want to mention that Larry has, Larry has a uh, website, Torima, T-O-R-E-M-A dot org, and I think it's going to display here, and if it isn't, 
uh, just find it. It's very, very useful. Well, gentlemen, I'm afraid we're out of time. Thank you so much sure. for what you do for the community and, and for your contribution and for being here. And thank you all for watching. Now, you can see, uh, you can stream this uh, episode again uh, on our website at dctv.davismedia.org. And while you're there, you can check out some of our other programs. We have very interesting topics and outstanding guests. Thank you for watching. I'm Lynn Weaver. See you next time.